Today I've got this nice property, which is a special case of something that's true for polyhedra and labeled vertices. So here we're gonna look at the tetrahedron version. So let's see what it says. So the number on any vertex of the following tetrahedron is the arithmetic mean of the numbers on adjacent vertices. So that means X is the arithmetic mean of Y, Z, and W. Y is the arithmetic mean of X, Z, and W, and then so on and so forth. And our goal is to show that X equals Y equals Z equals W. Okay, so let's get to it. So since X is the arithmetic mean of Y, Z, and W, that tells us that X is equal to Y plus Z plus W over three. And then we've got similar equations for the rest of the numbers. So we've got Y is equal to X plus Z plus W over three. Z is equal to X plus Y plus W over three. And finally, W is equal to X plus Y plus Z over three. But notice that's a system of four linear equations and four unknowns. So maybe it would be most useful to write that as some sort of homogeneous system of linear equations, and then from there, we could find the null space of the appropriate matrix. So let's take this first equation and rewrite it as 3x minus y minus z minus w equals zero. So that's just multiplying this three over and then subtracting. Then we can do something similar for the rest of the equations. Minus x plus 3y minus z minus w equals zero. And then minus x minus y plus 3z minus w equals zero. And then finally, minus x minus y minus z plus 3w equals zero. So that's just rewriting all of these equations in the kind of like homogeneous system of linear equations form. But now we can change this system of equations to a matrix equation. Maybe simultaneously, I'll multiply this entire system of equations by minus one. Notice that will not change any of the data. Instead of 3x minus y minus z minus w, we will have minus 3x plus y plus z plus w equals minus zero, but that's just still zero. Okay, so that's gonna give us, like I said, the following matrix equation minus three, one, 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 minus three, one, 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 minus three, one, 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 minus three, times the vector x, y, z, w equals the zero vector, zero, 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 zero. Okay, nice. Now we're gonna play the game where we just row reduce this matrix. So we'll row reduce this matrix and keep in mind that when we do row reduction, we do not change the null space. And recall that the null space is any vector of this form x, y, z, w that satisfy this vector equation, a times, maybe we'll call this v equals the zero vector. So like I said, that's the vector equation. If we can describe the null space, then we have a solution. Okay, so let's do that. Let's start maybe by rearranging this a little bit. I'll swap this last row and this first row. That'll give me one, one, one minus three. 1 minus 3, 1, 1, 1, 1, minus 3, 1, and then finally minus 3, 1, 1, 1. Great. Now I'll use this guy right here as a tool, this pivot point, in order to zero out everything below it. So in fact, this will look something like this. I'll take row two, subtract row one, that'll become my new row two. 
I'll do the same thing with row three minus row one. That'll become my new row three. And then finally, I'll take row four and I will add three times row one. That'll become my new row four. I'll wanna add that because I've got an opposite sign. So let's see what that gives us. That means that this guy is going to be row equivalent, which I'll signify with that little twiddle sub R to the following. I have not changed my first row. I have one, 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 minus three, but the rest of the rows have been changed. I have one minus one, that'll give me zero here. One minus one, that'll give me zero here. Negative three plus three, that'll give me zero here. But that shouldn't be a surprise because that's how we constructed these row operations in the first place. Now we'll have negative three minus one, that'll leave me with negative four here. One minus one is zero. And then in here, I've got one plus three, that leaves me with four here. Okay, nice. Now we'll continue. So one minus one, that'll leave me with zero here. I've got negative three minus one, that'll leave me with negative four here. And then one plus three, that'll leave me with four here. Okay, let's see what's going on over on this side. We'll have one minus negative three, that'll leave me with four. We have another one minus negative three, that'll leave me with a, another four. And then finally, I'll have one minus nine, that'll leave me with negative eight. Great. Now, notice I can do some scaling here. I can take row two and then divide it by four and let that become my new row two. Might as well divide it by negative four just to change the sign there. Then I'll do that for all of these. So I'll send row three, I'll divide that by negative four to be my new row three. And I'll do the same thing for row four, but I don't have room to write that down. So that'll leave me with something that is row equivalent to the following matrix. One, 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 negative three. And then I have zero, one, zero, minus one from that. Okay, we're in good shape. Zero, zero, one, minus one. And then zero, one, one, minus two. Okay, so now our goal matrix is row equivalent to that matrix over there, which is easier to work with. Let's maybe get rid of some of this, bring that towards the top and we'll finish it off. So in the last board, we determined if X, Y, Z, W satisfy the rule described in this paragraph, then the vector described by X, Y, Z, W is in the null space of a matrix that we called A, where A turned out to be row equivalent to the following four by four matrix. Again, we did some row operations to get here. Now we're gonna continue row operations until we're in so-called reduced row echelon form. So let's see, next up, we can use our row two to zero out this entry and this entry from row four and row one. So we'll do row one minus row two becomes my new row one. That will get rid of this term. And then we'll also do row four minus row two becomes my new row four. So that'll make it so that my second column is in good shape. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. So we'll have one in my upper entry because one minus zero is zero. I have one minus one, that'll give me zero. I have one minus zero, that'll give me another one. Then I have negative three minus negative one, that'll leave me with negative two. Okay, nice. Now we can keep going. Row two is not being changed. It's being used as a tool. So I can just copy that over. Zero, one, zero, minus one. Row three is also not being changed. Zero, zero, one, minus one. Then let's see, our row four, we've got one minus one, that is zero. We've got one minus zero. We have zero, one minus one, that's zero. One minus zero, that's one. Negative two minus negative one, that will be equal to negative one. So we're left with something like that.
Now we can continue. We'll use this entry right here to kill off these two entries. So let's see what we get when we do that. So row three will be our tool. We'll do row one minus row three becomes my new row one. That'll get rid of this entry. And we'll also do row four minus row three becomes my new row four. Okay. So in the end, well, this may or may not be the last step, we'll have one, zero, zero, then minus two, minus negative one, that'll be minus one. Then row two is not being changed. I have zero, one, zero, minus one. Row three is not being changed. I have zero, zero, one, minus one. Then row four is being changed. I have zero, zero, and then finally one, minus one, that's gonna be zero. And then negative one minus one, that is also zero. And we can look at this and the fact that we've got an all zero row tells us that yes, indeed, we do have a null space. Otherwise, the null space would be trivial. In other words, x, y, z, and w would all have to be zero. Again, Another thing is that since these first three columns are in the form of an identity matrix, these are so-called pivot columns, which means the first three variables, x1, x2, x, y, and z are not free variables. In other words, they'll depend on the last variable, which is attached to our non-pivot column, which is w. This is a free variable. Great. Now what we can do is just use the fact that if x, y, z, w is in the null space of A, then it's in the null space of this row reduced echelon form of A. So we can take this, multiply by x, y, z, and w, and set it equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, and we should have a more efficient way of getting a relationship between x, y, z, and w. So let's see what we get. So multiplying out this four by four matrix into this four vector, we'll see that the first entry is x minus w, the second entry is y minus w, the third entry is z minus w, the fourth entry is zero. But now notice if that's equal to zero, 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 that tells me that x is equal to w, y is equal to w, and z is equal to w. But if they're all equal to w, then they're all equal to a e. <coughs> But if they're all equal to W, then they're all equal to each other, which is exactly what we wanted to show.